All right, let's turn in the book of James, chapter 1, verses 16 and 17. This is the second week we're on these verses and uh, kind of covering the last half of it. When you get there, please stand. We'll honor the reading of God's Word. James 1, 16 and 17. Do not err, my beloved brethren. Every good gift and every perfect gift is from above and cometh down from the Father of lights with whom is no variableness, neither shadow of turning. Let us pray. Dearly Father, Lord, we thank You for Your Word this morning. And Lord, we thank You that You are who You've revealed to us through Scripture. Lord, that, that You give us every good and perfect gift. Lord, that You're never changing. Lord, that there's no variableness with You. And Lord, I pray that we understand that this morning. I pray that uh, uh, Your anointing would be on the Word, Lord, that it would be on the, the hearts, minds, and ears, Lord, that we could receive everything that You have for us this morning. Lord, we just want to thank You most of all for Your Son, Jesus Christ. Lord, that's the ultimate gift, and that shows how good that You are to us. And, and we can't fathom it. But Lord, we thank You for it. Lord, it's in Your Son's name we pray. Amen. So do not err. We've been on that for a few weeks now. We, we took it in the general sense and, and then we took it in the direct context that it is here. And we, we looked at it and said God cannot be tempted. God cannot tempt. As a matter of fact, everything that's good and everything that's perfect comes from Him. That's what we covered the last few weeks and it's because He is good. And it is impossible for Him to do or be evil. And it has always been like that. And it always will. One of the great truths of Scripture that we can have, that we can stand on, that, that we can have as, as part of the foundation of our faith, is that God does not change. That God is the same. No matter what changes in this world, no matter how attitudes and thoughts and opinions change, God does not. Therefore, neither does His Word nor His commandments. The commands for the apostles are the same for us. What he told Peter, James, and John, and Matthew, and all of them, that goes for us as well. When he said, go out into the world and make disciples, that was the same command for us. Don't let anyone lie to you and tell you that because we live in a different world, our faith should be different. That's a very popular opinion right now because you hear people say, well, that was the Bible was written over 2,000 years ago. That doesn't apply today. That's a lie. And that comes from the pit of hell. That's the devil. Because, yes, things are different today. But the Bible tells us, the revelation from God tells us that God is the same. God has not changed. And so the way that we are to live out our relationship with Jesus Christ should be no different than it was for people like Peter, James, John, Paul, Silas, Barnabas. All those guys. We have different callings, but the way they sacrificed, the way they lived their faith, that should be the same today. You know, we, we, don't let, we shouldn't let the outside pressures of this world and the influence of this world change who we are in Jesus Christ. And, and to try to get us to change who God is. Because we, we bring up our own perceptions of who God is. And we've talked about this. Some will say God is love or God is this or God is that. And some people picture God as an a, a old man with a long white beard sitting on a throne. When we can't fathom. There's a reason God said do not try to make an image of me. Because you can't. The Bible says God is spirit. And so we try to make God in all these things that suits us. And a lot of that is from the world. But yet God is the same God in Genesis 1-1 as He is in 2018. He's the same God. That's a, one of the truths in Scripture that we can depend on. And James here, he says, there is no variable, variableness. With whom is no variableness? That means that God is not temperamental. 
He's not moody. He doesn't have bad days and He doesn't have good days. He cannot be better, nor can He be worse than He was the day before. He is the constant that we can depend on in our lives. You know, there, there may be days that I may be in a bad mood and my kids can't depend on me to be maybe what they need all the time. We're all like that. We let each other down when we don't want to. Because we're not constant. Okay, we can be moody. We can be temperamental. We can be angry one minute and happy another minute. We can be loving one minute and hateful another. But God is the same. There is no variableness and that is what we need in our lives. That consistency that can only come from God. Now, you don't need to confuse that consistency with complacency. Okay, because we like to, well, God's the same, I'm going to stay the same. That's not what He's talking about. We are to, to draw closer and closer to Him as we go through this life. It's like He's at a, at a fixed point because He's the same. And we need to be steadily stepping and reaching towards where He's at. You know, we need to grab hold of who God is, His character and His nature. You know, and I think, you know, I mentioned, you know, we let each other down, and some people let each other down more than others. You see those people that you can't depend on, they're real flighty in the way they think. It's kind of like what the Bible talks about, they're blown about by every wind of doctrine. And we know that we can't depend on those kind of people. You know, you don't ask those people to do things. For you. But when God says He'll do something, He'll do it. You know, that's that's something that we can stand on. You know, and, and that's something that a lot of people today, I don't think they've processed that. That God is ultimately dependable, perfectly dependable. In the book of Numbers, chapter 23, verses 19 and 20. It says, God is not a man that he should lie, neither the son of man that he should repent. Hath he said, and shall he not do it? Or hath he spoken, and shall he not make it good? Behold, I have received commandment to bless, and he hath blessed, and I cannot reverse it. Now, one of the beauties of this scripture that is coming from Balaam. Okay, this is Balaam saying this. The man who was rebuked by a donkey can put out this kind of truth. And yet, there's a lot of times we don't grab a hold to this. And so, Balaam says God's not man. He can't lie. He, he has no need to repent. And he can't break a promise. He says, Hath he spoken, and shall he not make it good? And furthermore, he says, What God has ordained, men cannot break. So he says, Behold, I have received commandment to bless, and he hath blessed, and I can't reverse it. So Balak had called Balaam. He said, Come and curse these Israelites. And, and Balaam said, Look, God's blessed them. I can't undo that. He said, That's, that blessing is sticking with him. So James says there's no variableness and no shadow of turning. And shadow here, it, it has, the, has the meaning or denotes beginning or preparation. And so there's no variableness in God and He's not even starting to change. There's, a, there's no semblance of change whatsoever. He's not even stepping in that direction. That means there's no evil thoughts that exist in God that He may be able to act on. Because we know as humans, we have thoughts and they may lead us in a direction, different direction than what we need to go, but God doesn't even have those thoughts. And He can't go in the wrong direction because He won't even look in the wrong direction. Does that make sense? Because a lot of times, you know, we may be headed down a straight path, 
You know, the straight and narrow that Jesus talks about, but yet we see all these offshoots and we're looking. Well, do I, do I need to go? Can I go? Will it hurt anything? Oh, it won't hurt nothing. And you veer off. You know, we, we are like that regularly. But the theological term for God in this way is immutable. Okay, it means He cannot change. He cannot be changed. The immutability of God means we can depend on Him. The fact that God will and cannot change should add to the foundation of our faith. How can we put our faith and our hope and our trust in something that's uncertain? Okay, if we think His mood might change, how can we depend on Him? We can't if, if He's that way. God is the one thing, the one person we can always count on depend on. He's always there. You know, He said that in the Great Commission. Lo, I'm with you always. That means He will be with us always. You know, especially if you're, if you're trying to do what God has willed for you in your life, you can bet your bottom dollar that Jesus Christ is there with you. We can be certain when it comes to God. Because His character has been revealed by His Word and His Word has not changed. The last book of the Bible was Revelation. It was written about 95, 96 A.D. Okay? Not quite 2,000 years ago, but close. And the truths that are found therein have not changed because of the time lapse. The rest of the Bible has not changed because of the time lapse. You know, we... Roughly, some parts of the Bible was probably written about three to 4,000 years ago. Those truths still hold the same. You know, Psalms was written 3,000 years ago. You know, there's a reason that people are able to go to the Psalms and find, you can see every human emotion in them. If you need lifting up, you're going through a hard time, you can read Psalm 23. Or if you need to repent for some sin. You can read Psalm 51. you got people coming against you. You can call, read Psalm 2. If you're feeling blessed, you can read Psalm 1. If you need to go to worship, you can read Psalm 100. You know, those truths stand, stand true today. And there's no part of God's Word that we can say, well, that don't apply today. None. Whether it be Song of Solomon, whether it be Ecclesiastes, Genesis, the whole book. There's a reason it's there. There's a reason the Bible says God's Word will stand forever. Because it does not change. Sin is the same now as it was then. You know, there's nothing that we come across today that God's people haven't come across in their time. Maybe a different form, but it's the same thing. It's the same sin. And blessings have not changed. You know, when, when God told Jacob, yeah, all those that bless you, all those that bless Israel will be blessed. All those that curse Israel will be cursed. That, that hasn't changed. You can see that playing out in the world today. You know what Melinda was reading about giving our, our tithes and our offerings and putting it into the storehouse and we cannot contain that blessing. That's still the same. As written by Malachi at least 2,000 years ago, probably closer to 2,500. Those promises have not changed. And so by nature, if God cannot change, Jesus cannot change. Okay, we serve a triune God. God in three persons. So if God can't change, Jesus can't change. Why? Because He's God. You know, I had my... I had my boss ask me one time, I told you he's a lost man. He come up to me one time, he says, is God and Jesus the same? I said, yeah. But Jesus told the Pharisees, he said, before Abraham was, I am. Okay, and that I am denotes being Jehovah, being Yahweh. He also said, if you've seen me, you've seen the Father. If you're still in the book of James, just turn back a page or two to Hebrews 13.8. This sums it up. Jesus Christ, the same yesterday 
and today and forever. That's a blessing. Okay, the same Jesus that died for your sins on the cross was the same Jesus that was there at creation. Is the same Jesus that lives within our hearts. The same yesterday, today, and forever. And so if the Father can't change and if the Son can't change, that means the Holy Spirit can't change. You know, in the book of John, He's referred to as the Spirit of truth. Does truth change? No. We try to make it change. We, well, truth is relative. You know, you live your truth. No. Truth is truth is truth. Because the world wants to change what truth is and, and make it... Make it uh, I guess malleable, so it, you know, it can be different from one person for the or for this person. Look, you can walk outside; you can even be colorblind, and you may perceive the sky to be red. It's still blue. Doesn't matter how you see it; it's still blue. You may see these cushions on the pews as green. I don't know if, if people are colorblind. I don't know what colors they confuse. So. But you may see that as green. It's still red. It may look green to you, but it is still red. And so we've been polluted with sin. And we look, to, we look at the world, we look at God's creation through the eyes of sinful flesh. Now when we become born again, we can maybe look, them, look at things through the eyes of God. But the world would convince us that truth has changed and God says the spirit of truth Talking about the Holy Spirit. He does not change. John 14, 6. 14, 16. It says, I will pray the Father, and He shall give you another comforter, that He may abide with you forever. You see that forever part? You get that comforter. You get the Holy Spirit. The Spirit of truth. And He abides with you forever. Forever. That means he doesn't change his mind about dwelling with you. You know, and I talked about we saw Jesus in the book of Genesis. We also saw the Holy Spirit in the book of Genesis. It says the Spirit of God hovered across the waters. He was there in creation. He he came down when Jesus after Jesus ascended back up to heaven, and he's still with us today. He has not changed. Turn with me to John chapter 1. John chapter 1. Look at, and we'll be here for a few minutes, but verses 1 through 3 in John chapter 1. It says, In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. The same was in the beginning with God. All things were made by Him, and without Him was not anything made that was made. Made. Okay, that's talking about God. That's talking about the Son being together in the beginning. Nothing was made that Jesus Christ wasn't a part of. Colossians 1 says the same thing. So what was God doing in the beginning? He was setting everything on its course. He, was, he put in the seasons. He created the stars. He created the planets. And, and put them on their course. And they're so constant that without a literal act of God, they stay the same. There's a reason we can look a thousands of years into the future and know where the planets are going to line up. Know where the stars are going to be. And we can look a thousand or so years in the past and see where they were. Because they don't change. Their courses do not change unless an act of God knocks them off their course. So along with creating the universe, before all of that, well, he said he created the heavens and the earth, and then God created light. James says here in one seventeen that he is the father of lights. Genesis one three says God said, "Let there be light," and there was light. So back in John one, in verses four through nine. Talking about Jesus Christ. In Him was life, and the life was the light of men. And the light shineth in the darkness, and the darkness comprehended it not. 
So light came from light. Jesus Christ is the light of men, the Father of lights. There was a man sent from God whose name was John. Talk about John the Baptist. The same came for a witness to bear witness of the light that all men through him might believe. He was not that light, but sent to bear witness of that light. That was the true light which lighteth every man that cometh into the world. And so Jesus is the light of the world, and as John the Baptist gave witness to that light, He beseeches us and commands us to bear witness to that light as well. When we're born again, we have that light. If we're not a born again man or woman, if we're not saved, we can't sing this little light of mine, I'm going to let it shine, because we have no light. Because it has not been given to us by Jesus. But when we're born again, that light has been transferred to us. And you can turn to Matthew chapter 5. Matthew chapter 5, verses 14 through 16. He says, Ye are the light of the world. A city that is set on a hill cannot be hid. Neither do men light a candle and put it under a bushel, but on a candlestick, and it giveth light unto all that are in the house. Let your light so shine before men that they may see your good works and glorify your Father which is in heaven. And so, I don't know if you ever noticed that, but it says, he, put, he doesn't put it under a bushel, but on a candlestick, and it gives light unto all that are in the house. That light that God has given us should shed light on people all around us. That's why we, we can sing. And it's not just a kid's song. Okay? This is for adults. This little light of mine, I'm going to let it shine. And so to bear witness to that light, we have to let the light of the world that indwells us to shine. We can't put a bushel on it. I mean, why does God save us for us to cover what He's done for us? To, to quench that light, to quench the Spirit of the living God that's living inside of us. Why do we do that? Because we do. But see, this is the same light that's within us when we're born again. It's the same light that God created in the beginning. It's the same light that Jesus, when He says, I am the light of the world. It's the same light that was shining through Peter when he was preaching at Pentecost. It's the same light that Stephen was shining when he was martyred, when he was preaching before he died. It's the same light that Paul saw on the road to Damascus. It's the same light that he shined on his missionary journeys. It's the same light that's within us. The power that created the universe is living right here. That same power. God has not changed even though the world has. That's no excuse. That light is the greatest and most needful gift in our lives and in the world. Because if God gives all that there is good and perfect, there's no greater and more perfect gift than salvation. That's when that light comes within us. That only comes from God. You can't make your own light. You can't build your own figurative candle. And that light has always been given in the same way. Grace. Always. You know, we sung about it earlier. God's grace. Marvelous grace. There's a, uh, there's a doctrine in Presbyterian theology. Okay? It's called the covenant of grace. You have some people that look at the Old Testament as people had to live under a different way. And then you got the New Testament, people had to live under a different way. But when you, when you boil it all down, it's all by grace. Every bit of it. Because it says, the Bible says, Noah found grace in the eyes of God. Okay, it was by grace God accepted the sacrifices. It was by grace that God gave Himself to save us. That has never, ever changed. And it won't ever. People always will be saved by grace through faith. Always. And it's, an, it's imperative that in this world, in all its chaos, that we show people who the unchanging 
immutable God is. And who His, His Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ. You know, and that, that burning light should be within us. It ought to be a fire. There was... I think it was Jeremiah, he talked about this fire being within, within his bones because he didn't want to mention anything else about God. He said, I'm tired of it because when I mention, when I give a prophecy that you've given me, then I, I, get, I get castigated, I get persecuted, I get beaten, I get imprisoned, I'm done. But he said, it's like a fire shut up in my bones. I can't. I can't away with it. I can't get rid of it. That ought to be in us. And as Michael touched on this morning in uh, Sunday school, it's never hopeless. And we, we say that a lot, but here's the thing. God hasn't changed. He's still in the business of saving folks. He's still in the business of making people anew. And so there's always hope. Because if, if, if somebody was hopeless, then God isn't the unchanging hope. Jesus Christ isn't the hope of the world if He can change. Because that hope is something that we can depend on, we can count on. We can, we can base every aspect of our faith on that hope of Jesus Christ being who He says He is. That has never changed. So this morning, as, as Cleet and Cheryl come up for the invitation before we take part in the Lord's Supper, if you have a need this morning, if you need to repent of something, if you need to rededicate yourself, if you just need to pray, don't hesitate. If you need to be born again, you can do that this morning. You don't have to be in a church to be saved, but I think there's benefits of it. But... Uh, I just I pray this morning that, that you listen and, and that's a truth that we can stand on that God is the same yesterday, today, and forever. And that ought, to, that ought to make us feel good going forward. That ought to motivate us going forward. Because, you know, you may, you may have some financial guru that's trying to sell you on the stock market. And we know the stock market can change. We know it can go up or it can go down. But we're trying to... We're trying to show people a God who never changed that they can always depend on and trust in and their Savior Jesus Christ. Let us stand and sing.